Hey guys, Johnny Rocket here with day number three of our video series with Quentin. Yesterday, we worked on getting him moving a little bit faster on his back, how to take a breath with one arm still extended, and how to keep swimming after the breath. The day before, we were just getting him comfortable with his relationship with the water. We were teaching him how to kick with loose, floppy ankles. We were teaching him how to float on his back and move on his back. And then we even taught him how to rotate from belly to back. Today, we're gonna be working on some hand leap kicking drills. In some of my videos, you've seen me use these drills. They're very beneficial. There's seven of them that make up the hand lead series. You've got head lead kicking, hand lead kicking, hand lead to head lead, hand lead to hand lead, one arm to hand lead, hand lead claw, catch up drill. Today, we're gonna be using head lead, hand lead, and maybe some more depending on how he does on those first two drills. Let's just dive right into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with review today. The first thing we're gonna review are the traveling bobs. We're skipping right past the normal bob, going straight into traveling. And then we're gonna get on the kickboard. After we review that, we'll get him on his back a little bit. And then we're gonna review the couple of pineapples before we put the fins on and start doing those handly kicking drills. Today, he should get a lot more balance in the water, as well as a taller body line. He should also be able to start taking breaths to the side without having to roll over onto his back like we finished yesterday. Go ahead, traveling bobs. Good. All right, and I'm gonna take you back on your back. I'm gonna start you off and then let you keep going. Good. Face up. Face up. Face up. There you go. It's a weird position, yeah, it's a weird position. Hard to stretch your belly out and lift your face up. Good. Small, fast kicks. Good, you're there. Awesome. You can see how he's getting a lot more comfortable on his back. He'll be able to start using things on his back. He'll, he'll, he'll actually start to revert back to his back whenever he gets tired, and that's the goal. We want all of you guys out there to use some back kicking in order to recover sooner and keep swimming longer. On your back, you're gonna go as fast as you can. We're going all the way down, okay? Small, fast feet, small, fast feet. Is he running in the water? Yes. Floppy ankles, floppy feet. Boil the surface of the water with your toes. I feel he's heavier. Good, you're halfway, you're past halfway. Nice job. Yeah, it's a little different without the fins. It's gonna be harder without the fins, but you remember that I was saying how the way to just keep someone from becoming fin dependent, which hardly ever happens anyway, but in order to prevent it at all costs, every time you're doing a review, review it without the fins first, then review it with the fins. And the reason I like reviewing it without the fins first is because you still have a lot of energy and stamina. You're fresh, you're gonna be a little bit faster, a little bit crisper. And then once you're fatigued and you're like, man, that's so much harder without fins, go ahead and put the fins back on. And then you'll see yourself do that drill even better than you did the day before after having tried it without fins. <laughs> wow, and you're too good. This one's already way better. You're lighter too. 
clean with your mouth, spit the water away if you have to. Stay comfortable, it's a hard exercise. The more you can relax yourself, the better. It's gonna be hard regardless. You're doing good. I like the steady deep breath I hear. It sounds like you're exercising, it's much better. On day one, his breath didn't sound like this. It was more like holding it mm. and then letting it out and gasping for it. You know how to get on the, kick, the kickboard on the wall. Let's do it. There you go. So this right here is also going to show him, even though it's just review, it's also going to show him just how how easy it, things can be with fins. He'll gain a healthy perspective of how much harder he has to work when it's time to try something without fins versus when it's time time to do something with fins. Before, he was probably trying his 100% all the time. Now that he's giving this 110% on the kickboard, he'll, he might be able to back off his 100% on the fins. So he might be able to go at 80, 90% effort on the fins now, and you'll see how he'll develop two different efforts now, an easy effort versus a hard effort. It's very important to have both in swimming. In fact, I say that the more gears you have, like on a bicycle, the better swimmer you are. If you have only three speeds, you're an average swimmer. But if you have six speeds, you're a better swimmer. Okay, now he's ready to start doing the pineapples again. We're gonna review the pineapples. I'm gonna have him finish on his back, kick a little bit and stand up on his own. Then we're gonna have him do it from his belly to his back and back to his belly. Then we're gonna do a couple where he takes two strokes, rolls to his back, two breaths, and he's gonna take two breaths here and then he's gonna close it off and take two more strokes. Yep. Important that you redevelop your relationship with the water if you're learning how to swim out there on your own. You need to understand how water floats you. It doesn't pull you down. On day one, I watched him try to do these pineapples from like a complete standstill and he was getting water all over his face. That time he pushed right off the wall and went into the pineapple because he's starting to understand that momentum helps you turn your body in the water. On day one, he hadn't figured that out. Now it's almost instinctual. That's why I tell people, First thing you do when you're learning how to swim is pull your feet off the bottom and float. Let the, let the let your body just linger in the water. You won't go under. You're just temporarily letting your feet bounce off the bottom of the pool and you'll start to understand how water is like space. You're floating. Now get it up, swing back. Good. Get up, stand up. Okay, the second pineapple we're going to review now. Two strokes, pineapple all the way to your back, and then two more strokes. Chin up, chin up. Good, good. Wow, very good. Now roll back. Good, good. Man, without fins, I anticipated that to be a lot messier. Good job, good job. Not saying that it was easy for him, I just anticipated it being messier. It was hard for him, but he was able to keep his focus on what step to do next. It doesn't mean it wasn't hard, I just expected it to be messier. I expected him to not have that anticipation instinct yet. That was awesome, let's watch it again. Good, bring the knees in, bring the knees in. Oh right. I forgot you weren't standing up. I'm so sorry. I, forgot. I was teaching. I was telling you to stand up, and you were rolling back. That was awesome. He didn't even listen to his teacher. It was beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes even the teacher makes mistakes and accidentally forgets what step they're on. That was awesome. He kept his focus, even when I was telling him to do something else. Spit it out. Blow it out. It's not the end of the world. Whoa, and he stand up, stood up on his own too. He's even got that down. My guess is actually he finds it easier to stand up without fins. It is easier to stand up without fins. If you are out there and you're like, man, the fins keep tripping me up. You're gonna need to bring your knees in even higher to your chest before you slam them on the ground so the blade of the fin misses the bottom of the pool before putting your feet on the ground. Okay, it's very important. Standing up in fins isn't easy. All right, the next step is the 45 degree pineapple. I'm gonna be pulling on his arm a little bit here and probably placing my hand under his head because he's not wearing fins on this one today. 
All right, so this one, he's gonna need a little bit more momentum from me, a little bit more help before he can be uh, do it on his own without fins. That will probably be tomorrow though. You'll probably see that as early as tomorrow. It's gonna be two strokes, 135 degree rotation, two strokes. Watch me. That chin back. Keep this arm out. Good. Okay, whenever you're ready. Nice, stand up, good. Awesome. <clears throat> now I wasn't there to remind him to bring his arm, keep his arm out, but we brought it back and then he actually had a nice little body line there going for a second. Ooh. Good, good, almost had to stand there. He pulled one arm down to take another pull and that's the arm he normally uses to stand himself up. So he just got a little confused in his own head when he pulled that arm down. He was just, un he was surprised that there wasn't any stability. He'll get it on this one, watch this one. Good, good. He even got his arm back out in front on his own there that time. Nice, once you get to your back, right there, keep that chin back. Back, good. Keep it back, good. I keep pulling on your arm thinking I'm gonna pull you and then you start it. Sorry, I'm not trying to stop you doing it. That looks good. Nice, he did all that one on his own. It looks looking good. Today we're gonna try and put some longer blade fins on Quinton. The short blade fins are very beneficial for a lot of exercises and the long blade fins are just like extra large training wheels. So we're gonna try some long blade fins today and then he should be able to do some of the drills a little bit easier, but it might take him some time getting used to them. All right, so we're gonna start him off getting used to these fins by putting them on the kickboard. I'm gonna have him kick down and back with these longer blade fins so he can get used to them and then we'll resume that last pineapple drill we just did and go right into the head leaving hand leave kicking. Here we go. You look at the smile on his face. He's like, I love this part. The fans. This part's awesome. What do you think of them? Okay. Breathe a lot. Don't let water get in your mouth or your nose. Just stay calm and breathe. Should be an enjoyable experience. After a while. Might not be enjoyable at first. So these technically aren't even long blade fins. Long blade fins are what scuba divers wear and they're really long and plastic, so they're actually even more effective. But they're not helpful in a swimming pool. They're actually kind of counterproductive. You'll kick too big and you'll kick too slow. So what he had before, what we would call training fins. Training fins are for athletes who are too, maybe too fast for these, what we call floating fins. Floating fins have a slightly longer blade than training fins. And then of course you got long blade fins, which are scuba. These, uh, these floating fins, these I find are perfect for beginners of all ages and kids until about age 14, 15 for, for um, any type of practice training. Once they get to that older age, I usually have them have both sets of fins a pair of floating fins and a pair of training fins. All right, so now we're gonna resume the one arm pineapple where he only goes about 135 degrees onto his back. So slightly on his side, slightly on his back. Good, chin back a little bit, chin back. Good. Right. More strokes. Wow, that was incredible. So he got that pretty easily on his own. So now today he's definitely ready for these head lead and hand lead kicking drills. He's gonna like these a lot. Head lead kicking, your arms are by your side, stretching your head out in front. Head to lead the way the entire time. This drill is really good for a swimmer's head position in the water to correct it. Sometimes head positions are too high. Rarely are they too low. 
but most of the time are they too much side to side if they're serpentining down the lane. You want to keep that head nice and still. You want to keep your chin slightly tucked so it feels like the back of your neck is nice and smooth. You don't want any wrinkles in the back of your neck. You want it to feel nice and smooth. So stretch your spine out. You want to feel as if there's a, a, a baseball cap on the crown of your head that you're pushing that little bead on the cap to the other wall. At the same time though, you're pulling your hips and your legs and your feet backwards and in the opposite direction. So you want to feel like you're pulling your body in two different directions as you do this drill. Watch me. Okay, keep watching. And this time as I do it back, Quentin's gonna be able to see the demonstration as well. Right? I feel almost like I'm trying to charge forward with my head at an incredibly slow pace because I'm in water. I got you, I got you. You were like, how do I roll to my back? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to use your arms to roll to your back, use your shoulder. Yeah, give it a little shoulder twitch and kick yourself, use your legs too to turn, right? So you're trying to use your upper body while your legs stay down. You gotta turn the legs too by kicking sideways and doing those scissors that I was talking about. Not so bad, spit it all out, get it all out. Okay, now try to roll back and then I'll pick you up. Yeah, not so bad. The rollback was way easier, way easier, way easier. <laughs> yeah. For those of you out there who might have a hard time rolling onto your back, you just saw that that is the harder part. Rolling back to your belly is easier. If you remember yesterday in the video, I told you that when you roll back to your belly, it's easier too in the pineapple drills because you're using your arm, right? Well, even on on these handly kicking drills, if you don't have an arm to roll you back to your belly, it's still possible, but you're gonna have to start to use your hips and your kick to help turn you. Use your feet to turn you by putting different direction on the water, by putting different pressure in a different place on the water to change your direction. Good, kick yourself up. Good, it's fast. Nice! He has a better roll to his belly and to his back. On his back, I'm gonna have him wait until he rises up a little bit higher to the surface again. Because right now, when you try to turn too deep in the water, it's, it's part of what's keeping your head under, because then you, I said chin back, and you did. You pushed your chin back, but that just made it deeper in the water, right? Pick the head up and then win. Woo! Yeah, baby! Good job. He got all the way onto his back on his own that time. I saw him pick his head up before rolling and then when he rolled, all he had to do was let his legs sink a little bit and kick fast and that kept his head up. Good. Good. That was awesome. So that time you even got to see him recover on his own. He rolled to his back, got water over his face and figured out how to get up higher and recover and blow it all out. This is the part of training that some of you might not enjoy because you're gonna get water in your nose, on your mouth, in your mouth, and it's gonna be rough. But if you do it 21 times, that magic number 21, if you do it 21 times, you won't be getting water in your nose or your mouth anymore. Then today, I'm probably gonna do this about eight times because he's already getting it on, on try number three. And then I want him to move on to the hand knee kicking, which is a better drill anyway for what we're trying to accomplish here. This head lead kicking drill, the reason I'm making him do it is because I need him to start to be able to rotate his body without his arms. It's gonna help him a lot once we add in the arms. He won't have to rely so much on the arms. He'll be a more well-rounded, complete swimmer. Recover, recover, good recovery. Good recovery, you're okay, good job. Let me give you one more piece of advice here, all right? 
right before you want to initiate the rotation, kick faster. Lift your head up, kick faster, then rotate. You're going to find that at a higher speed, you'll rotate at a quicker, tighter velocity. Yeah! Didn't work for you on your belly, but it worked for you on your back. One of the reasons that he needs to kick more is because I'm having him lift his head slightly before he rolls to his back. Normally, if you're a competitive swimmer out there, I wouldn't tell you to do that. I don't want you lifting your head position like that. But for someone who's learning how to get their own breath, and he's someone who might be accidentally keeping his or forcing his head down and unsure how to do it, I'm okay with him lifting his head before he turns and then rotating his back. But now I'm telling him that he has to kick faster if he's gonna do that. He has to kick a lot faster because when your head lifts, your hips drop, and now you're causing a lot more resistance. You're swimming uphill. So you need to kick faster just to maintain this body position, which for him right now is slightly better. Okay, it's keeping his head up. He's able to breathe. It's slightly better. Eventually, he'll get so much better at anticipating rolls, anticipating breaths, water, that he won't have to lift up anymore. That could be a year away from now. Okay, so it's okay to, to make some minor adjustments that would be counter to what other coaches might teach you. All right, if some other coaches are out there saying that one size fits all, that means they're just regurgitating whatever they were taught as a kid because they can't fathom the idea of maybe they didn't have the best coach in the world or maybe sport has progressed and there are new techniques or there are exceptions that we've noticed are okay. It's a necessary trade-off. It's like trading a slightly worse body position for success in the breath. And that's what we're after. Sweet. <clears throat> Good. The last, the last step and tip that you can work on or that he's gonna work on to make his head lead kicking better before we move on is to try and make the turn faster. Don't turn slowly and try to keep yourself up. Try to make it almost as if you're rotating your body ahead of your head and then you're just gonna whip the head around and it's gonna match with your body. Wow, yes. Yeah, did you see what a difference that made? Oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. You snapped your body around way quicker and your face never dipped underwater. Not even once. That was excellent. I'm gonna have him do that one more time. Nice. You rotated back there, you went deep. Water floats us, it does not pull us down. Water picks you back up. One of the one of my favorite demonstrations to do, and I'll do it with Quentin so he can push me down because other people have seen it. I'll become a beach ball and I'll have air in my lungs. He's gonna push me down. I'm just gonna bounce right back up to the surface and then he's gonna push me down again. I'm gonna float right back up. Okay, you're gonna push me down twice. So you can see water floats us. If you've got air in your lungs, those are like air balloons inside your chest and oxygen bubbles always float back up to the surface. They can't, they don't sink. So when there's oxygen inside your body, it's gonna be pulled up. You're pulling, your, when there's air in your lungs, you're being pulled up to the surface. Without air in your lungs, you'll sink. Watch this. Get it up, get it up. <laughs> nice. You look like you're getting comfortable putting on your back and clearing it out too. It's not causing as much panic. The more he does it, the more he realizes it's not the end of the world. Plus the more he does it, the less it happens. And when it does happen, there's less water getting in because it just keeps trying, keeps getting better, and keeps practicing what I'm telling him, especially regarding the head position and the breath. All right, so now we're doing hand lead kicking. Hand lead kicking is the second drill in the hand lead series. And this one is probably the most common one used. This drill puts a swimmer more on their side than their belly, so it makes it a little bit harder to balance. Recommend using fins for the first time you try this. And you're gonna be kicking with your face in the water. You wanna stay in the tallest body line you possibly can by stretching your fingertips forward 
and stretching the other fingertips back, stretching your hips and your feet back, stretching your hip, your head forward. So again, you're pulling your body in opposite directions to lengthen out your spine. For those of you who didn't know, you can swim about two inches taller than you can walk on land. When I swim regularly for exercise, I have my friends and family asking me if I've grown recently because I'm a lot taller when I'm a swimmer. And so when you swim in the water, stretch your spine in opposite directions to give yourself a taller body line. It'll also engage your core. The more you're stretched in opposite directions, the more engaged your core will be because your body feels like it's being pulled off balance and your core is what you use to stay in balance. So for this drill, you're gonna take a breath about every two or three seconds on a regular interval. Don't hold your breath until you need one. Take it before you need it. Take your breath before you need one, like this. Okay, now for him, I'm actually gonna start him out with his face already breathing. So he's gonna start off like this. And we're gonna let him kick all the way down, getting his head in a nice comfortable position in this breathing hand lead kicking technique. Once he gets comfortable in this position after probably two to four lengths, then I'm gonna start having him dip his face in the water and come right back out and come right back out. After that, I'll have him start leaving his face in the water and turning it for the breath, okay? So it's almost like a progression. We're gonna start with him just breathing the whole time, getting comfortable in the body position, and then we'll work him back into the practicing this drill with his face in the water and only turning it for a breath. Now, lay your ear down on your shoulder. There you go. You don't need your forehead out to breathe while you're going so fast. Keep up, keep up, okay. Wow, it's like we're both doing handling cooking drills over here. I'm gonna make my swim this is a cool idea. Lay that head down more in the water. No, no, keep your face breathing. Just lay the top of your head down more. There you go. Doing good and we're almost there. I'm gonna put your hand on the wall. You can stand up. Nice, good. On the way back, we're gonna be using the arm he doesn't normally use to breathe. We're gonna see how this goes. Good, think about pulling the hand up, pulling the hand up, yeah, there you go. Wow, he's all on his own, wow. He's all on his own, folks. This looks incredible. We're doing it together. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone pick that up that fast. Good, sorry, I kicked you. He only stopped early because I got too close to him and he kicked me and it threw him off a little bit. <laughs> I did not anticipate that being that good, especially with his off arm. I think it's time to see if whether or not he should be using that arm to breathe. I'm gonna help you with your head position a little bit. I want to turn, be more in line with your spine. Yeah, almost like two to your shoulder. Good, pull this arm up. There you go. Yep, good, lay this top of your head down more. Good. Get in. You're getting used to that sink. You do sink at first, you always will. I almost told you at the other end that I was really impressed how you got prepared for the sink before you were able to rise back up to the surface. And then on this side, I was gonna tell you, prepare for that sink again. But I thought you would, it's okay. The less this head, can, or the more this head can relax, the better this drill will feel. Yeah, it's okay for it to lay in the water a little bit. Good job, keep stretching those fingertips forward. You're doing good, you're almost there. About two yards away. Good. Got a leg cramp? Oh, 
your feet. Just tired. Just tired. This drill is hard, it's not easy. It's gonna wear you out. Take long breaks between 25s because I want you to feel fresh each time you push off the wall. If you push off the wall and you're feeling that burn still from the last lap, you might give up in the middle or you might have a panic moment. It's okay to be fresh for all these drills, especially the harder ones. <clears throat> bigger kicks with your legs, bigger kicks. It'll help you, it'll make you feel easier. Yeah, more volume. You're five yards away from the wall, you're still fine. You can even look at it if you need to. Yeah, now you're starting to be aware of where you are in the water. Now you're starting to create your own awareness in the water. You're not just out here drilling into oblivion. You're in a pool and you're looking around and you're going, okay, I can adjust where I swim. I can go side to side. I could see how far I have left to go. I could see how far I've come from. When you're training on your own, one of the best ways to know when it's time to go again for another length or another attempt is called a heart rate interval. I call it a heart rate interval because what I want you to start doing is listening to your heart rate internally. So like with your body, you can feel the thumb, especially when you're working hard, you can feel it even in your fingertips. Once you feel like you're caught your breath and you can breathe comfortably and it doesn't feel like your heart rate is in your neck anymore, it's back in your chest, then it's time to go. I call it a heart rate interval. It's basically waiting until your heart rate has settled so you're calm again. If you're training for triathlons or the Olympics, obviously you're gonna have to do shorter breaks because you want that interval to be kind of tight. But when you're learning things, you need to start off fresh and calm each time. So I call them heart rate intervals because I want people to start listening to their heart rates and paying attention to their body and using that as their cue on when to go again. Because we're all at different stages in our, in our lives, in our swimming career, in our body types. So, so I've been overweight at times. I needed more rest. So that's another reason the heart rate interval helps with individual people practicing on their own, with individuals practicing by themselves. If you pay attention to your heart rate rather than a clock, you'll find the experience a little more enjoyable. Oh, we took on some water, let's see how he responds. Yeah, he spit it out, good. I heard it, did good. Pull him a little bit more towards the middle just so he doesn't hit, hit the back wall. He's doing good. Lay it down more, bring the hips up more if you can. Yeah. There you go. Ah, ah, you lost that, it's okay. Keep the arm underwater. I like how much you're stretching it forward. That's better than most, but keep it underwater. When it comes up, it sinks you. Yeah, there you go. All right, so now we're gonna go down to that deep end. We're gonna go into those other drills, probably to uh, the like, dip in the face, probably after that, if he's feeling fresh enough. But right now, he just did those kicks so smoothly that I have no doubt he's able to do them with his face in the water, but it's a very hard workout, so I need to give him a little bit of a break. We're gonna go down in the lower pool again, and I'm gonna take him through the deep end for the first time. It's gonna be on his back, and we're gonna take the fins down with us so he has that confidence, but he's gonna go into the deep end with me for the first time. Now, when it comes to deep water, there are a few things I like to start with. For one, it's the same as the shallow water. Water is water wherever it is. The only thing that's changed is the bottom of the pool. The bottom of the pool is farther away. It doesn't change the water. If the water's still the same, it'll still float you if you got air in your lungs. If you don't got air in your lungs, it'll sink you. The best thing you can do when first going into deep water is be on your back. Because when you look down at the water, it scares you. When you look down at the bottom of the pool, it scares you how big it is. And you immediately imagine yourself down on the bottom there, drowning without anybody coming to help you. And that's a scary place, that's a scary thought to have. So instead, I like, I recommend you go in on your back with someone who can swim very well, and you have fins. If you don't have fins, it's okay. Grab a kickboard and hug the kickboard. That'll also give you a little bit of security, a little bit of confidence. If you don't have that either, spread out like you're creating the most surface area you possibly can and breathe. Best thing I, you can do in the deep water is breathe. It calms your heart rate down. In fact, blow out more than you breathe in. If you ever wanna raise your heart rate for any reason, breathe in more than you breathe out. But if you wanna lower your heart rate for whatever reason, breathe out longer than you breathe in. 
your heart rate slows down. It's how alligators slow their heart rates down to like one beat a minute. You gotta breathe out longer than you breathe in and you've gotta take clean, deep cleansing breaths. Because what's happening is your heart rate's fluttering, which means your brain is starting to release those chemicals that have to do with adrenaline and panic. And you don't want that. You want your body to feel like it's at rest. You want to treat the water as if it's a big old water bed. And you're just laying in bed. Okay, here we go. Good. Remember what I said about the breathing? Keep the heart rate low. We're in it. Turn you around. Go back. Your light is better. I right, stand up. All right, the next step is I'm gonna have him do it again with me and he's gonna start looking around. He's gonna start looking around, not underwater yet, but he's gonna start looking around just so he can understand that he doesn't have to remain completely frozen. He is in control. When I was holding his head up, he was light as a feather. I could have let him go, but as a good teacher, I won't until I've told him that that's what's coming next. Hey, don't trick your swimmers into doing things. You're gonna lose their trust really fast. Good, yep. Yeah. Oh, next, I was gonna say. Start looking around. back and here stand up when you're on your back all of a sudden it's going to start to feel like deep water isn't a problem and that's what i'm doing i'm changing the relationship that you have with deep water when you're on your back and your lungs are filled with air and you're able to kick you're not going under you won't you just won't and even if you did you have fins on you can kick yourself back up to the surf but what what's happening is he's now going into the deep water going I feel the exact same I did with the shallow water. In fact, I can't even tell when we've left the shallow and gone into the deep. That's good. That's what we want. One more time. Now have you kick yourself back to the shallow. Here we go. And stand up. No problem for you. All right, the next step is to grab his kick forward and we're gonna have him now with this face up in the deep end, okay? Dismount on the kickboard right here, touch the wall, or like yeah, grab the wall if you want, and then bring the knees towards the wall. The arms stretched. Good. Deep water's the same. Any water. We never try and touch the bottom of the pool and swim in shallow water. We're not going to do the deep water. Nice! Yep, you got it. Looking swimmer. Arms stretched. Good. Breathe deep. Yeah! Now grab the wall, bring the knees to the oh, here. Good. Alrighty guys, that's all we have for today. If you found this video helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, and be consider becoming a member today. Head over to our website for the next merch drop and follow us on our other social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram for tips and tricks throughout the week. We'll see you in the next video tomorrow.